This is our second example for the Wilcoxon rank sum test. Let's have a look at the question. Julia has obtained two samples of grapefruit, one from supermarket A and one from supermarket B. These grapefruit were weighted on the same scales and the results obtained for their weights in grams were. So there's our data for supermarket A and there's our data for supermarket B. Use a Wilcoxon signed Ransom test to investigate whether there is any significant evidence at the 5% level that the grapefruit from supermarket A are smaller than those from supermarket B. So this question is specifically telling us to do a Wilcoxon signed Ransom test. However, as with the previous example, notice that my two data sets are not paired. I don't have one supermarket that spent, uh, sorry, one grapefruit that spent some time in A and some time in B. It's two separate sets of data that can't be paired. I also have two different sample sizes, which isn't always the case, but is a key indicator that it is a rank sum test. With any hypothesis test, we need to follow our six steps. So the first one is to write out our hypotheses. Then we use those to state if it is one or two tailed and the significance level. We calculate the test statistic. We find the critical region and we compare and conclude. So let's start by looking at our hypotheses. We always need a null and an alternative hypothesis called H0 and H1. And as we have done with several of these questions, we need to use eta. And our alter uh, null hypothesis is always eta A equals eta B, or whatever our two criteria are. So for this one, eta supermarket A equals eta supermarket B. And again, that reminder there on the right, that the Greek letter eta is this N, which is elongated on the right-hand side, and that represents the population average. To work out the alternative hypothesis, I need to decide if we are not equal to, greater than, or less than, and I can work that out from the question. So just reading through what they're asking me to do, they're asking me if the grapefruit from A is smaller than B. So I'm going to do E to A, less than E to B. So, moving on then to steps two and three, is it one or two tailed and what is the significance level? So deciding if it's one or two tailed depends on your alternative hypothesis. For this one we have E to A is less than E to B, so we're just looking at that lower end and it is one tailed. The significance level is stated in the question 5%, but remember we should use 5% if it isn't stated. Next comes calculating the test statistic. We need to make sure we do this carefully and get this right. So for the Wilcoxon Ransom test, we need to follow a few steps to calculate the test statistic. The first one is we need to rank all of the data as one set. So both supermarkets class it as one set of data and rank it from smallest to largest. So having a look at all the values from A and B, I can see that 104 is my smallest, so that is going to get rank 1. You may want to pause the video now and see if you can rank them yourself to make sure you understand how to do this. Going through the rest of the data then, I will give a rank 2 to 116, then 118 and 120. Next up, we have 132 on rank 5, 140 rank 6, 144 rank 7, and 153 rank 8. Then we have 164, 167, 169, and 197. And the last three is 208, 212, and 246. So we've now ranked all of our data as 1 but we've kept it in supermarket A and supermarket B. So our next step is to calculate the total of the ranks for each variable. So I'm going to add up all the ranks for supermarket A, which is 9, 14, 5, 6, 2, 1 and 10. And that gives me a total of 47. And then I'm going to do the same with the ranks for the values of supermarket B which add up to 73. I'm then going to use the U formula 
to calculate the test statistics. So I'm going to get two test statistics, one for supermarket A and one for supermarket B. And I'm going to use the formula that can be found at the top of table 11, which is the last table in your formula booklet for Wilcoxon Frank sum. And that is T minus fraction M bracket M plus 1 over 2, one for each of our totals. So for supermarket A, I'm going to take the total 47 and I'm going to minus 7 bracket 7 plus 1 over 2 because there are 7 numbers or 7 grapefruits for supermarket A and that gives me a U value of 19. And then I'm going to do the same for supermarket B using that number 73 for the total. And this time there are 8 values or 8 grapefruits from supermarket B which is why I've got 8 bracket 8 plus 1 over 2 on the fraction. So I have two test statistics and I'm going to use the one that is the smallest value, which is 19. So next we have the critical region and we need to find what that critical region is. So we're going to use the critical values of the Wilcox and Rank Sum. This is table 11 in your formula booklet. It's the last table in there. You will notice that your U formula is at the top if you need it for calculating your test statistic. And it also says on that first line, the table gives the lower tail critical value. This is why we always use the lower of the two U values, because we're only given the lower critical value. So to find the critical region, we need to know the values of N and M. And this is how many numbers there are in each of the two samples. The order of these does not matter. It does not matter which one you call N and M. So I have seven grapefruits from supermarket A and eight group supermarket eight grapefruits from supermarket B, which is why I have seven and eight written down. This is a one-tailed five percent test, so I'm going to be using the top table from table eleven, and I'm going to go across from seven and down eight. If you go across eight and down seven, it will give you the same critical value, which is thirteen. And therefore, my critical region is anything less than or equal to 13. So finally, we are going to compare and conclude. This is a distribution-free test, so we cannot draw a normal distribution or anything like that. So I'm just going to draw myself a line from 0 to infinity. I'm going to mark the critical value of 13. And anything less than or equal to that is my critical region, so my reject zone. Then I'm going to plot my test statistic, which for this one is 19. And you can see that that doesn't fall in the reject zone, so we accept H0. So to conclude in context, I need to refer back to what the question was actually asking me. And it asked me to investigate whether there is any significant evidence that grapefruit from supermarket A is smaller than those from supermarket B. Our conclusion is that we have accepted H0. And our H0 was that E to A equals E to B. They are the same. There is no difference. So I am not agreeing with this statement. So my conclusion will be, therefore, there is no significant evidence to suggest that the grapefruit from supermarket A are smaller than those from supermarket B.